Hi and welcome back. This time I'm going to be constructing a bunch of scale siding boards and attaching them to the house. Throughout these past few episodes, I've been slowly working my way towards finishing the outside of the house. For most of the outside, this is the final external layer, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what it looks like when it's done. Anyway, let's get started by cutting some siding blanks. So that was the easy part of the project. Now I need to somehow form a sort of tongue and groove on each siding board so they'll fit together on the house. Let me step back for a moment. Here's the end of each of my boards. I need to somehow remove material at each end so that the siding board's profile looks something like this. Then I can stack these shapes together to form a solid, continuous surface that will cover my house. Normally, on a full-size board, ripping a profile like this would be a piece of cake. But on a board as small as these siding blanks, I run a serious risk of the saw pulling the board down inside it. And on top of that, I'm having trouble figuring out how I'd safely hold material this small anyway. At first, what I thought I wanted was a zero clearance insert for this new saw, but that only solves half my problem. I still don't know how I hold these siding boards both precisely and safely. So I thought about it for a while, and eventually a solution came to me. Instead of a zero clearance insert, I'd make a sort of smaller plywood table that would sit on top of my existing saw. I'll clamp this fixture to the saw so it won't move. This fixture will have a zero clearance slot, and will also have some specially shaped guides to help hold the board down. The advantage of making a secondary table gives me a place to mount these guides, which will be critical to ensuring the board stays lined up. You'll see what I mean soon, but for now, let's start by making this fixture. First, I'll make some runners to help hold this fixture in place. Next, I'll attach the table service to the runners. I'll slice a strip of wood off the side of my new fixture. I made it too long, and use this to make the guides. Each of the pieces I'm cutting will become a guide. Cut a rabbit in the side of each so they can hold the siding blanks in place.
Each guide has a slot so that its position can be adjusted. Lastly, I'll cut the zero clearance slot I was talking about previously. And now let's put it together. Here's the idea. The sliding blanks feed under the two guides. The guides keep the blank in position, and the saw blade cuts a groove lengthwise of them. Here's some finished siding boards. They fit together quite nicely. Now, that was just one cedar board's worth of siding. I bought quite a few boards I need to do the same process to. I cut up each board into rectangles. I sliced each board up into strips. I put rabbits into each board. And eventually, after a lot of repetition, I was done. Now, before installing all this siding, I need to prime each board. And finally, I can install them all in the house. Some boards need to be shorter to fit, so I marked and cut each to length. Each successive board locks into the board below it. Above and below doorways and windows, I sometimes needed to remove a longitudinal section of siding. So I marked each siding board and brought it over to the vise. At the vise, I cut each side with a coping saw, and then removed the material inside with a chisel. Otherwise, it was a lot of repetitive work. Six hours in, this is about how much I had finished. Once it was time to start on the second floor, I made sure that I only attached the overlapping siding pieces to the upper floor. This is to ensure that the upper and lower floors continue to separate cleanly. And after a ton more work, here's the end result.
I didn't get the whole thing done. It was just too much work to complete in a single weekend. I'll keep plugging away though, and I should have it done before I start on the next task. There's one big question though that I have front of mind. What color should I paint this thing? Brown, gray, tan, something more adventurous? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this part of the project interesting, feel free to take a look at some of the other episodes. And if you want to follow along, feel free to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you later.